Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial in which I will show you how we can build this console table in Fusion using direct modeling. This will cover basic sketch construction. As you can see, it's very minimalistic. And then everything else we solve simply via direct modeling. Okay, with all that, let's do it. So here we are in a new document. First thing, let's go to document settings and we will change this to inches. Second step, right click on this root icon and then we click on do not capture design history and click continue. Now we are inside direct mode. We would like to create our first sketch. So we go to front, create new sketch on this plane. Ideally, in this case here, we can work with a center rectangle. Click somewhere, drag this out. And there you see we have dimensional readouts. Now with tab, uh, I can switch between them. Type in 34, tab 6, enter. There we are. Now we can always change these numbers afterwards. This midpoint is actually very useful. When we create a two-point rectangle, we do not have this center point, by the way. And with this midpoint, we can move this whole rectangle around, and it's a center point. And I would like this to be perfectly centered on the origin of our document. And we can do this via the vertical constraint. So we force this point to be always vertical above this point. Very good. Now I have to move this one up and down. I would like to work really precise. So the height of this to here should be 32 inches. That's pretty easy. We can go to sketch dimension, click, click. Be careful with the mouse movement. So horizontal, click, and then I type in 32 inches. There it is. Pretty cool. Let's click finish sketch. Then we can rotate our view a little bit. We will extrude this one out. You see this is actually um, drawn above the X line. So it's kind of like symmetrical. I would like this furniture piece to be perfectly centered also from the top on this point here. So let's go to create and extrude. We can select this profile. Now here we can turn this off, select this again. Let's work easy and smart. So we turn on symmetry, whole length for each side. And then this should be a total of 14 inches. There we are. Cool, no? So now we have a nice block. Okay. The top part should be cored out. One of the easiest way is we go to modify and shell and shell this. So we select this top face. One inch material thickness. Looks good. Okay. So what this command did was it selected or basically it maintained all these faces and the rest, the top it cored out and all these faces now have a one inch material thickness. What we did here with a furniture piece pretty much is the standard also with a hairdryer, shampoo bottle, soda bottle, whatever. We have a material thickness. Okay. Now, here I would like to have a frame out of square tube. We're going to create just a very basic concept representation of that. So at this point, I can go here, there's the sketch, turn the sketch on, right click and edit sketch. I can hide this body for the moment. Now I go to line and I will add at this point a line. I draw this on purpose a little bit crazy like this. And then somewhere here, not on the midpoint, not on the end point, but somewhere here in between. Very good. If by any chance you glue this onto the midpoint, 
uh, there's a triangular constraint we can delete, delete, or simply delete the line and draw this again. Very often I find redoing things sometimes is faster than trying to figure out what went wrong. This line is kind of cricket. Now we would like to perfectly draw this vertical. Now look at this vertical constraint. So you see how these two points were vertically aligned? We can do this also with lines. Suck, suck, suck. There. Now I don't have to make sure if this is all really 90 degree. It is because this constraint does it for me. This point I would like to be horizontally level to here. Suck. See, pulled this one down. And now um, I would like, let's say this one have a one inch material thickness. So we go to sketch dimension, type in one. There it is. You might notice already that we do not draw sketches as needed from the beginning. We can loosely plot them out and then we constrain, force them, massage them into the shape we want, which is pretty nice. This line here is yellow, uh, I mean blue, because that means this can move. This is black because it's constrained, it can't move. So what's missing? Uh, maybe like another constraint is missing. Let's do a dimension. So U to U, that should be horizontally. So I move it to the side over, which means this is now a distance measurement of two inches. So I make three or four and move this one up and down. Easy peasy. Okay, that's kind of like all we need. I turn this one on on purpose, then I go to extrude, click on this one, and I can now exactly do the same. Symmetry here and 10 works really good. And this is a little bit too short. I go that it has to be 14. Don't hit OK yet. You see there is no line because operation. This is super important, this part. A lot of people overlook this from the beginning. Here we want this to be new body. So it creates a new body and doesn't glue it onto it. Okay, there we are. Now we have here a one inch material thickness. I would like this instead of being looking like a one inch wood block to look like kind of like a frame made out of steel square stock. So look at this. I select with shift and left mouse button each site and I go to shell and say one inch and okay. <laughs> look at this, pretty cool, huh? We can still, if you want to play around a little bit, now the sketch was only the start. I can select, for example, these two faces, go to move and copy. This is move the face, okay. And I can move this one down, maybe by minus one inch. Just to see, do I like this or not? No. Undo, redo. Very good. Okay, That's, this is the beauty of direct modeling. We create a sketch and then we, we create geometry and we can continue modifying the geometry quite easily. From time to time, we get also these interesting features here. Uh, right click, simply dissolve them, so they're gone. Now we want to have a copy on the other side. We could go back and create a sketch. That's kind of redundant, however. I simply use the mirror command. That's faster in this case. So this, I mirror over this yellow plane. There. Thank you. So now I have my first body, second, and third. Cool. Okay. Below here, I would like to have a frame. Um, we could make a sketch under here and then do an offset. So I'm going to show you now two ways how we can do this, just so you understand. There are always multiple ways. So sketch under here. And then I go to offset, click on this edge and do an offset of minus one inch. 
Okay, so this actually now created here under this geometry, the sketch, I can close it, extrude, select this, and then I bring this one down by one inch and also new body and click OK. Cool. Works actually really good. We can, however, yeah, we'll delete this body, just keep, keep the sketch. We can actually change this so it fits. That's a good exercise to understand how flexible direct modeling is. So here's my piece and I make a copy and this copy, I rotate to the left 90 degrees. Thank you. And then this piece I would like to move under there. So we go to move point to point this body from there to this corner point. Cool. Okay. Yeah, that's um, that's not long enough. Hmm. What we can do now? Well, you know, we have this move command and face. We can select this face and this face and then say from this corner point, move it to maybe this edge or this corner point there. Okay, pretty cool. You see, easy. We need to have a crossbar here. I will select this one and make a copy of this copy there. Simply move this down a little bit. Very good. Now check this out. We go to press and pull. Think about this as I'm taking this face and I can move it and I can move it to the opposite and ignore this artifact. Okay. Oh, look at that. It's removed. Zuck. And here. Zuck. And on purpose, I make this one just a little bit shorter. So now I have a small element and oh no, <laughs> I didn't make a copy of this one. Beginner mistake, which I still do. So make a copy. We need to turn on this copy command. Okay, very good. Thank you. Ah, good, this happened. So you see that even I make mistakes. So now there we move this and then we will remove this. And look, now we even have two pieces. Okay. And then we selected this and moved this back. Okay. Now, I would like this to perfectly sit there, centered. We can use what's called the align command. So align this edge to this edge. Hold on. Actually, I would like there, this center point on the edge. Now there it is. Very good. Okay. Let me do this one more time so it's easier to see. And maybe I will also move this a little bit closer there. Very good. So align. You see when I zoom in there are a lot of snap targets. So this midpoint, not just onto this edge, but there's the midpoint. So there we are. And then we can say uh, move this face from there to there. Thank you. Very good. Okay. We have here a mirror command, which we can dissolve. There we are. Um, and the piece is done. Now this is a good concept model. Um, and this is something I do a lot when I have a rough idea and I want to flesh out proportions. You saw actually how easy it is to move faces around, to change dimensions, etc. So 
that's the reason why the sketch in this case is rather basic because as solve everything here we are direct modeling. Okay, that's it.